to another budget and leg it video. Now I promise you oscilloscope videos and we're going to do some oscilloscope videos. But before I get actually cracking the video I just want to say get well soon Daniel. I know you had an operation and uh, yeah just recover soon and hopefully you'll enjoy the videos and uh, that might make you recover quicker. Well obviously won't make you recover quicker but you know just get well soon mate all right. Right, what we're going to do today is we're going to do what's called a relative compression test. So we're going to do a compression test through an oscilloscope. Now, what this is really good for is, one, it's really, really quick. And two, if you've got, if you've got like a V6 or V8 engine, or even a diesel engine for that matter, or even engines where it's difficult to get to the actual cylinders to do a compression test, this will lead you in the right direction. It's very, very quick, and like I said, well, you'll see how quick it is. And all you really need is, a, is an oscilloscope. You don't need an expensive oscilloscope. You just need an oscilloscope and a low amp pro. That's all you really need. Um, I'm going to be using two channels, but you don't really need two channels. Just one channel will do you, and I'll show you kind of both ways. But like I said, if you've got a car that's spluttering or got misfires or anything like that, and you want to do a compression test, this is just so much quicker than taking each spark plug out, dropping it down, and you know, and especially on diesels where obviously you can't do that, you need special adapters to make your uh, compression tester work, and it's very, very expensive. This will basically put you in the right direction, then you can kind of work from there. And then, if you want to, after you've done that, you can actually use this cylinder leak test. And essentially, what this is, I'll slide it down, this will tell you if you don't drop it. This will tell you if you've got bent intake valves, if you've got bent um, exhaust valves, it just, you know, this can tell you. But what we're going to do is, we're going to be able to see compression and you can even do uh, some maths and actually get your compression more or less bang on from this. I'm not going to go into that in this video, I'm just going to quickly show you how to set it up and kind of do a compression test really quick, simple, and puts you in the right direction. So let's get cracking. And even through the oscilloscope, with a pressure transducer, you can actually plug it into the cylinder, and even with a bit of practice, you can actually see exactly what's leaking on your engine as well. I don't really know that 100%. I know enough to get away with it, but it's one of them things where if you do have a scope, or you're gonna buy a scope, because scopes now, to be fair, you can actually buy some really cheap scopes, and they, to be fair, they actually are quite good. Um, but what I would suggest, if you are going to buy a scope or do something like that, test it on cars that you know are good. So you get used to seeing waveforms that are good rather than bad ones because then it's just a lot easier to kind of work it out. But what we're going to do is we're going to do a relative compression test on this. This is a 2004 Renault Laguna. It's a 1.6 petrol, uh, four-cylinder. Um, that doesn't really matter because it's the same no matter what you do. Uh, so yeah, that's that's uh, stuck in. Right, I'm going to put on a 60 amp setting, which is 10 milliamps per volt. Just let that focus in. So that's the conversion rate, 10 milliamps per volt, which I'm going to put my scope on a 2 volt setting. Essentially now, what we've actually got, I'm just going to take off channel 1, we have a 0 to 200 amp scale. Even though it only goes to zero to two volts because of our low amp probe so if we max out we basically got 200 volts going through there I hope that makes sense it'll make a lot more sense once we actually uh, do the next bit now what we need to make sure is we need to put this over the positive going to the starter motor from the battery um, make sure you get the right one so and it is actually directional if you get it wrong the waveform will be upside down. Not the end of the world, you can just turn this. So essentially, you can actually turn this both ways. It goes both ways. <laughs> um, and you'll, well, well, let's see the waveform. So I'm just putting that over the battery connection. So it's the big heavy duty lead going from the battery to the starter mode. That's all I've done. Done nothing else but that. What I'm going to do now is we need to disable the vehicle so the vehicle doesn't start, just like you would in a compression test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug the injectors. The injectors are just in here. I'm going to unplug four injectors and then we're going to get cracking with it. Four. So this car now will not start. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my foot flat on the throttle to keep everything open up and we're going to see. So I'm just going to do that now. 
So as I'm doing that, you should hopefully see something happen on the scope. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to start this. What I do need to do before I do that, I want to put this on a two second time base. So I just need to go through, I should have maybe done this with you. So we've got on a two amp or two volt setting. Just go there at the back. Now this is our time base, this is our voltage up here and our time base. This is how long we are seeing the event for. And I'm going to just set it to a two second time base. So that means this screen here is two seconds. That gives us a nice clear view of the actual waveform. The other thing I did forget to do as well, I need to zero the amp clamp, turn it on. <laughs> I didn't even turn it on. Turn it on, zero it. You see there's a little bit of a gash in there. So now we're going to start it. Should be able to see, so I'm just going to record it. Now, that should give us enough data. As we can see, this is our event. Let's just zoom into it. A bit more. Now, obviously, that doesn't particularly look like anything at the minute because we can't decipher which cylinder is which, but we don't really need to. This engine is a good engine. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the compression. I'm just showing you as an example. So, as you can see, these peaks here, the peaks are more or less all even within reason, more or less even as you can see there. Now, what would it look like if we had a dead cylinder or something happening in one cylinder? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna disconnect or take out number one spark plug to simulate uh, a dead cylinder. And then we're gonna see the difference. But not only that, I don't know if you heard the engine, what you've also got, uh, and it doesn't take that much to learn, is you can hear when an engine is low on compression because it just it turns over completely different so if you remember this waveform and what we can do is we can do the next one now so next time I actually crank this it's going to be with number one cylinder spark plug taken out so I'm going to crank it again just want you to listen to the sound difference this time and also want to see the waveform slightly different so we're going to do exactly the same thing again Now hopefully you heard the difference in the engine sound. So let's zoom back into this waveform. Now, can you see any difference? We're missing a hump here. And you can see essentially we've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, because it's a four cylinder engine. Now, because we know we've taken off number one spark plug, we know this is number one cylinder. So one, three, four, two, that's the firing order. And that's another thing you need to know. You need to know the firing order. But what we are gonna do is, because again, we know we've taken off number one, but this test, even with one channel, is still valid. And the reason why I say it is, is because you can clearly see you have a dead cylinder. Doesn't really matter at this point which cylinder it is. You can diagnose this vehicle with having some problem inside the cylinder, whether that's whatever it is at the minute. But this will tell you within seconds, rather than trying to undo all the spark plugs, do it, you know, take each spark plug out, do compression tests on each cylinder. This, as you can see, is just it's quick, it's so much quicker. We can definitely say we have a dead cylinder here. I'm gonna put a second channel up and I'm gonna put it to the actual coil pack of this happens, I just happened to pick number three cylinder. So again, without, we, we can definitely identify because we know we've taken out number one, but if we didn't know which cylinder was dead, this is a way of identifying it, but this is not really that essential to do. So I've got channel two. Right, I have to refilm this part again because it didn't come out, the sound for some reason didn't come out, but not to worry. So what I'm gonna do now is I've set the second channel up so we can see the when the actual um, coil pack fires so you can line it up. So it's exactly the same, number one spark, spark. Number one spark plug is out. 
So we're going to see a dip and we're going to actually work out a time in there. But bear in mind, this is what's called a wasted spark system. So two coils fire together. So we're going to see, I'll, I'll show you, I won't go into too much detail in this because I can save that for another video. But you are going to see two firing events um, and I'll show you that. But we can still work out where we are because of the spark plug we've taken out. So this will still work on any car. So let's now get into the scope and we'll see. Right, so we've still got channel two set up on two volts, which as we know from the conversion on the later on, still got a two second time um, on the bottom. Now I've set the actual number three um, coil to 20 volts, uh, even though it's a lot higher than that, but you're gonna see why I did that in a second. And um, we've got, uh, yeah, that on channel one. AC coupled and peak detect. Well, again, I'll go through all these later on, but you're gonna get the idea. So just for the setup, I'm back probed on number three injector. Now, it's important to know what number your injectors are. This is the timing belt or timing chain side of the engine. So you've got one, two, three, four. Um, so we're on number three. And we also need to know the firing order, which is one, three, four, two. That's our firing order. Uh, and you need to know that for your car to work it out in the scope. Once you've got them few very simple things, it's really easy to figure the scope out. So let's now crank this baby over. All right, let's just stop that and see what we've got. Let's just quickly make sense of this. And it is very easy. As we can see, we've still got a missing hollow here, 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 here and here. And we know that's our number one because we have taken out number one spark plug. But not only that, we also see the second pump here has a big spike, which is our coil pack. So we now know that's number three. So we go one, three, four, two. And that makes sense because as we can see, we've got wasted sparks. So we've got two firing orders. Um, but again, like I said, I'll go through that in another one, but that doesn't matter. We know we've taken out number one spark plug and we can see a spike here. So we know where we're going. Some ignition or some coil pack systems, they only fire once. We have two of them firing together, but we can now really see very clearly just what we've got here. So we know, we know we've got a missing hollow here. So we know we've got a dead cylinder. We know we've taken out number one spark plug. So we know that's number one cylinder. Like I said, if you've got more than one, once you've taken out one plug, you'll know which plug you're taking out. We now know that we've back probed number three coil pack. And as we can see, we've got a firing event here. So we know that's number three. So we know one, three, four, two, and that's when they both fire together. And it repeats itself, repeats itself, and the pattern is very, is very clear, and, it's, and it repeats itself nicely. So it really is very simple. You don't really need the second channel, like I did say to you before. We can take the second channel off. All this test is really designed to do is just a really quick way of seeing if we've got a problem with compression somewhere. We're not trying to diagnose the problem from this. We're only seeing if we have a problem with the compression of the engine. If we don't, then we can look at other things on the car. But for the sake of a couple of minutes running this test, we can clearly see if the engine is good or bad. Because if you've got bad compression, your engine is never going to run right. You can change everything in the world, but you've got bad compression, your engine's never going to run. So with this test, very quickly, it will tell us the condition of the engine. Do we need to go further into the engine or do we need to look at something else? Do we need to look at spark plugs? Do we need to look at coil packs? Do we need to look at injectors? Do we need to look at head gaskets? We can basically say, okay, we know the compression is good, right, let's do that. Let's just put that back there and we get some waveform porn. Look at that. And like I said, if you are thinking of getting a scope, it's just a good idea just to do these very easy, simple tests. Get used to what they look like, what a good pattern should look like. And uh, it'll make it easier for when you see a bad one. So I hope that makes sense really. It is very easy and we've got some nice sexy patterns. I'm going to be doing a few more of these videos and the reason I'm going to be doing them kind of like this is because when I'm doing diagnostic videos I don't need to explain what I'm doing again because if I have to explain every single time I do different tests the videos just be too long. So I'm going to do some nice short videos on just basic um, oscilloscope things and then once I'm doing different videos you can kind of understand it and see where we're going from there 
So that really is it, nothing to it. Right, when you think about it, we've just done a compression test through the battery and the starter motor. Now I think that's really cool. And you can see from the, from the data we had how accurate it can actually be in the sense that we took out number one spark plug and you could see the dip or the missing value. You could see it straight away and that will tell you if you've got a compression problem. Now, you might have one sometimes where it's only half, uh, it's not completely gone, but it's only half as, as tall as the other one. So you know you've got some compression there, but not enough. So you will see kind of a variation of that. The, what I showed you was a complete dead cylinder. Sometimes you might have only half the compression, but again, you will clearly, clearly see it. Um, I will go into a lot more detail as regards, um, you know, this and uh, coil packs and stuff, because you did see kind of two firing events on that. But we know from the first firing event and we pegged number three, so we knew that was number three. But again, I'll go into more detail, but like I said, you don't really need the second channel. Just one channel is good enough for this test because you can clearly see if you've got a problem in one of your cylinders. It really is so simple. And like I said, especially on diesels, especially on cars that are really difficult to get to the spark plugs or, you know, just depending on how the car is made or what sort of car you've got, this will do it very, very quickly. And um, scopes are relatively uh, cheap. You can get kind of cheap scopes out there and you can pay a fortune from you can also get cheap ones so yeah look hope it helps thumbs up subscribe and all that all our links down below to our facebook our instagram to our gofundme project and all that but most importantly don't forget get your hands dirty we'll see you for the next one